Okay, what we're going to do now is, now that we have the setup pivot table subroutine, we're going to go ahead and add another subroutine that begins to manipulate the pivot table programmatically to do interesting things. So as an example, this is sort of what the pivot table looks like after the setup pivot table code is completed. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and by origin, so across the top I have Newark, JFK and LaGuardia. I want to look at the count of the number of flights that originate from each of those. So I bring down ID, which is a unique record ID <coughs> for the flights. And I want to change this from a sum function to a count. And now I have a count of the various flights that depart out of each of these points of origin. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out so we can start with this empty table. I'm going to go down here, I'm going to begin my routine. So maybe flights by origin. And now I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I need a pivot table variable. And I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a second. Okay, so I have my setup code. I have defined um, my pivot table, my pivot table cache, a P range object to use as a temporary range. I've got three objects defined for each of my major worksheets. And I went ahead and initialized those worksheets to the different worksheets in the workbook that I'm going to be using. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is select the pivot table worksheet. ET output select <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and set the pivot table equal to the active sheet pivot tables one so this selects all the pivot tables that are associated with the active sheet in this sh case it's the pivot sheet because that's my PT output, and it's going to pick the very first pivot table uh, and select it equal to the and set it equal to the the pivot table object. So I know that I only have one pivot table for the pivot, so I can kind of take advantage of this uh, particular uh, syntax. Now I'm going to go ahead and set my PT cache object equal to PT dot um, pivot cache. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear any existing pivot tables. So the clear table eliminates it. And the reason I want to do that is if you don't do that and you start adding fields, you can add duplicate fields and it causes you know, some redundant information to pivot tables. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and turn that uh, clear it. And I'm going to go ahead and set uh, uh, updating to manual. What updating the manual does is allows us to update the pivot table manually, uh, I mean programmatically, and also keeps it from um, trying to refresh while we're working on it. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in the row fields. So I add fields here. row fields and for now in my row field I want to put in unique carrier And next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is add in my column field. So in this case, I wanted the origin to be my, com my column field. So I'm going to go ahead and dim something called an object field. 
a variable called object field. And I'm going to make that a pivot field. OK, so a pivot field is any of these are called pivot fields. So these pivot fields could be either row fields, column fields, or data fields, or something else called a, uh, a filter, which escapes me at the moment. But when we say field, we're talking about one of these values. So what I'm doing in this line of code is saying, OK, I want to go ahead and just work with one of these as an object for a second. And then I'm going to go ahead and set that. So I say, give me a list of all the pivot fields, and then of those, I want origin. So now my object field is equal to this one right here. The next thing I need to do is I need to say, OK, what do you want to do with it? Well, that is all about setting the orientation of the object. So object field dot orientation equals XL. And you can see here, I could make this a column field, a data field, a hidden page field. That's the one that's a filter, or a row field. In this case, I want to make it a column field. OK, so I have my row field. I have my column field. The last thing I need to do is add this, you know, the intersection field. What I mean by that is that's the field that actually shows up in the table itself. Right? We're going to count, in this case, the number of flights. So in this case, I can say with PT pivot fields, and I want to say ID, because we're going to do a count of the ID. And I'm going to do an in with, because I'm going to do a couple things to this. So with that particular field, so now in this case, we went in and we grabbed the ID field. And I'm going to go ahead and go in here, and I'm going to tell it to set its orientation to an XL data field, which is the one in the, the, one in the, in the table itself. And the function I want to use here is the count function. And the position in the table is 1. So now I've set my row field, my column field, and my intersection field, or my data field. The last thing I need to do is turn the updating back on. Faults. And I'm ready to test. So just a quick recap. I went ahead and I went out into my pivot table. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my pivot worksheet. And I got all the pivot tables. And I told it to give me the first pivot table. And set that equal to my PT object, which is a pivot table object to find up here. Then I said, OK, give me the cache for that object. Turns out we didn't really need the cache, but I have it anyways. I cleared the table, and I start out with an empty table, set the manual update to true. Then I went ahead and set my row, my column, and my data field. So let's go ahead and see if this works. OK, so we have a solution here. It doesn't seem to be exactly what I wanted, so let me go ahead and empty this real quick. And run it again. Okay, so this is giving me it looks like a sum instead of a count here, which is interesting. So it's doing something, but not exactly what I wanted it to do. So the reason that happened is because I didn't do Excel count. This has to be Excel count. So going back, starting an empty table, go ahead and run this code. Something happened there, and now this is working. So this is set up an account, uh, set up to count. So it looks like this code is working now. And um, one question you may have is, okay, why did I add up here in my setup code? 
the unique carrier only to later on blow it away with this clear table. The reason we do that is if you don't set an initial field in your setup code and you try to find the pivot table with this line, it won't find it. So until it's a it has some sort of field, either a row field, a column field, or a data field, you're not going to be able to grab it with this sort of active sheet pivot tables one approach. Um, so the way I got around that it was I just make sure that every time you set it up it has some sort of default configuration. That default configuration allows me later on to go in and grab it with this and then I can clear it and, and sort of do what I need to do with it. So that, that's why that might seem a little redundant.